So this article just got <laughs> really weird. Um, it says that Biden signal only days before the election that he will be demanding oil companies to take a more active role in lowering prices, vowing a, in quotations, come to the Lord, talk would happen soon. Well, what does that mean? It, he's not referencing himself, is that right? I really wanted to get it right. Trying to find some balance in my life. Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing today? I hope you are doing well. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are seeing this video. So I want to jump right into it. Before we do, we got to take care of a little bit of business. So if you guys are not subscribed, I would love for you to join the channel by hitting that red button, turning it gray, turn on your notifications so you'll know when I upload a video, leaving comments down below and any video that you feel you need to share or can share would also greatly help the channel. So let's jump right into it now that we've got that done. This article says the U.S. diesel shortage squeezes farmers, homeowners, and White House. It's squeezing more than that, y'all. So I have said time and time again that we will be dealing with higher price of fuel, whether it's diesel or even the fuel that we use for our vehicles as well once the election is, is done. So the election is now passed and Biden has the midterm election behind him and the political headache of soaring energy costs is only growing. I can attest to that because just yesterday fuel prices were at 327 and then today they were almost 345 overnight and that's regular fuel diesel was even higher energy cost is only growing as a shortage of diesel fuel leaves a large swath of the nation bracing for a challenging winter so if you're not preparing you guys you need to start preparing now inventories of diesel in the united states are the lowest they have been heading into the winter um, in 70 years unnerving a broad spectrum of consumers and businesses. The shortages leave soybean farmers in the Midwest struggling to stay out of the red. And lawmakers in New England are imploring the administration to please release the nation's emergency home heating oil reserve. Why are they begging them to do that when they so freely give it to Europe? Meanwhile, in the Southeast, a major national supplier of diesel, Mansfield Energy, recently declared a code red, code red, warning that some terminals were running out of fuel, forcing supply trucks to divert elsewhere, meaning they are having, if they go to one station that don't have it, they got to try to make it to the next one, even if they're running on fumes because they don't have the fuel necessary to deliver these loads. Industrial customers were advised to give three days notice before making new orders. Home heating oil suppliers are confronting similar challenges in New England. Since the year 1951, this is the lowest the inventory has been. And this is said by Andrew Lippow, a Houston-based oil industry consultant. He also says, it is quite concerning considering demand is four times that what it was back then. I've also said time and time again that sure, this administration wants to get rid of coal. They want to get rid of diesel. They want to get rid of anything that's not considered green. That being said, we are not set up to do that yet. We don't have the infrastructure in place. And I know that sounds like I'm repeating myself, but it is, it is the absolute truth. And it's okay to have these dreams, wishes, and goals, but you need to do things in the proper order to get a successful result. That's why we're getting the results we have right now. It says diesel is a workhorse of the economy, helping power most major industries. Companies rely on it to deliver their goods by truck, rail, and ship and nearly one in five homes in the Northeast use diesel for heating oil. The price hikes this season are crushing, in turn driving up the cost of food and other goods. 
The average price at the pump is $5.36 per gallon, according to AAA, up from $3.64 a year ago. In California, it is nearly $1 higher. The article also goes on to read, the cost to heat a residence using diesel-based home heating oil is projected to increase 27% over last year, according to the U.S. Energy Information Agency winter outlook so basically what is taking place is a bidding war and the fact that europe has been cut off by russia they're now out here bidding for the same fuel well the same oil that new england has been bidding for for years but new england doesn't have the funds the resources to outbid that country i mean who can that's why they're asking for help from the Biden administration. The supply is going to places that will pay the most money for it. And in New England, we are having to pay a big premium, said Kate Childs, the vice president of Tux Ors Fuel. I hope I said that right. A supplier in Connecticut. She says some of her delivery trucks now have to drive from terminal to terminal to terminal before they can even find enough fuel to fill their orders. The crunch is driven by many issues. A surge in demand as the economy recovered from the pandemic coincide with a sudden plunge in global supply created by sanctions against Russia, which were triggered by its invasion of Ukraine. So while the United States is shipping fuel over to Europe for whatever reason, whether it's for them to use or for them to to uh, refine and send back to them, I, I, I seriously doubt that that's the case. But the United States is now finding themselves in an increasingly competing with Europe for fuel deliveries. And guess who's going to win? So here's what they're saying some of the challenges are with this. Compounded by the closing of older refineries in the United States in recent years which has reduced the amount of diesel made here by 1 million barrels per day or about 6%. It is unlikely that new refineries will take their place. And that is what officials are saying. Building and running such infrastructure is expensive and typically only profitable if, the, if it operates for decades. Investors are wary of such projects at a time when the nation is transitioning away from fossil fuels and that's the thing it's not a transition they just want to do a straight jump a transition is smooth a transition is smooth a transition is not all of these bumps in the road and higher cost and it's just insane so it says now with winter coming and europe about to impose a full import ban on russian petroleum products the frenzy to lock down enough fuel for american businesses and consumers is leading to big price hikes and uniquely challenging market dynamics in october two tankers that were filled with diesel in the middle east and on their way to deliver it across the mediterranean in europe were diverted to new york harbor according to tracking data reported by reuters even at a time Europe is paying sky high prices for the fuel. U.S. buyers were willing to pay more to avoid outages. Such maneuvers are keeping the supply flowing, but at a very high, high price. So I pose this question again. I think I've asked it before. Who is winning in this whole situation with Russia and the fuel and the sanctions because Russia doesn't seem to be affected by the sanctions that we have on them and other countries have on them. Seems like the more we sanction, the less we get and the more we owe, okay? We'll, we are building up bigger debt over debt over debt. Now, while this article goes on to try to make it a little more political, they're saying that the shortage was a politically potent talking point for Republicans during the midterm campaign with conservative candidates and pundits such as Tucker Carlson 
of Fox News suggesting filling stations were on the verge of running out of fuel altogether. That was never the case, but soaring prices are very real, wrecking havoc on the economy and delivering a painful financial blow to customers or consumers. I see what they're saying, but whether Tucker was, he wasn't totally lying. He was exaggerating the point to get the point across. If something were to happen in the process of making all of this fuel, then we would be out of fuel. We are absolutely low on fuel. No one's denying that. The 25 day thing came into place because of where it stands today compared to yesterday and years before. Now they are still making, producing fuel. So therefore we, we won't run out of fuel as long as they keep producing it, but we are behind on the production levels of producing it. Okay. So the article then goes on to say the pressure on Biden is not just coming from Republicans, more than 30 lawmakers in the house and Senate from new England. Most of them Democrats are pushing the president to release fuel from the Northeast home heating oil reserve, which stores about 10 day supply, 10 day supply of fuel to be available in the event of a supply emergency. So Tucker wasn't, and in no way am I defending Tucker because I don't agree with everything that he says, but sometimes you have to exaggerate a point to make the point because people are so lackluster in reporting the story. Notice the story got pushed the minute he started saying that because you have to draw attention to things because they will sweep it under the rug and pretend that nothing is happening. Just like on the website for USDA where it says there are no real food shortages. You may see some gaps here and there because supply hasn't made it in. But if the supply is not there, then there is a shortage. If diesel is not there, there is a shortage. If regular fuel is not there, there is a shortage. So there is no doubt that we are way behind on the production of fuel, but you want to get rid of fossil fuels, but you don't even have everything in place to do that. The letters that the lawmakers were sending into the president were letters warning that families are in danger of not being able to keep their home, to keep their homes at safe temperatures this, this winter. This is life or death for people, not just a talking point. This is life and death. The article then goes on to say that the administration has signaled a release from the reserve is likely, likely as winter weather arrives. It has not been tapped since 2012 when it was used to provide fuel to emergency responders in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. The article also goes on to read that the administration has been meeting with governors to strategize on protecting fuel supplies. It is holding off on a release from the reserve at the moment so that small amounts of extra fuel is available should conditions worsen with severe weather or an acute supply chain emergency. The home heating oil shortage is hitting at the same time New England power companies are warning in a letter on October 27 that gas supplies are so tight blackouts are possible this winter. It says Biden has few options available to him to quickly boost such fuel supplies. One proposal the White House has put on the table is curbing exports of domestically produced diesel and natural gas, a move the industry warns would create chaos in the energy markets as other countries retaliate. So this article just got <laughs> really weird. Um, it says that Biden signal only days before the election that he will be demanding oil companies to take a more active role in lowering prices, vowing a, in quotations, Come to the Lord. Talk would happen soon. Well, what does that mean? It, he's not referencing himself. Is that right? Okay. I mean, maybe I'm reading it wrong. So one easier route to lowering all prices will be revoking a law that allows only U.S. vessels to transport oil or gas from the Gulf Coast to other domestic ports. 
foreign vessels are more readily available and charge considerably lower rates, but there is inadequate congressional support for weakening the rule, which is strongly supported by union and ship builders. This is going to be the last little paragraph I'm going to read because this is a long article, but it says that inventories are so tight right now that even the smallest hiccup in the supply chain, such as a fire at a refinery, threatens a major disruption. Well, I guess we're going to have hiccups because all I'm seeing is more new fires popping up here and there. Y'all need to stock up. Y'all need to prepare. Get your get yourself in, get your house in order. Get your life in order. Don't believe what they're telling you when they tell you it's no shortage of food. When they tell you it's no shortage of fuel, there is a shortage, and people are worried. You just gotta listen to the right people, read the right articles, and you'll see it because they're gonna hide it on the media. Right now, they're not even really talking about it. What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. The farmers he works with in the Midwest are getting particularly hard hit. Unlike major retailers such as Walmart or delivery companies like FedEx, farmers can't just pass along fuel surcharges to their customers. Prices for their product are set by the Commodities Exchange in Chicago. At the same time, prices of diesel are soaring. Farmers are burning more and more diesel. Low water levels in the Mississippi River mean the barges, many of them normally load their product onto, are not in operation, forcing the farmers to drive long distances to alternative sites to deliver their crop. Diesel. 